Okay, so I don't normally do uh, demonstration videos, but I found some techniques that I think are really quite cool and I'm planning on creating a new body of work from it, so I thought I would go ahead and share this because I know that in my research I've benefited mostly from watching videos because a lot of the information that you see on the internet contradicts each other. And I think that that really indicates that a lot of people have a lot of success with a lot of different things. So the main idea behind this technique is the use of Citrusolve, um, which is a concentrated cleaner and degreaser. Um, this is Valencia Orange. They have different types but one thing that I have found is that there are some types that are more successful than others. Um, the concentrated one is obviously much more effective than anything else that I've tried. Um, I did try the multi-purpose citrus solve cleaner and it was an absolute disaster. So make sure that you get the concentrated version even though some websites will tell you to not do that. Um, I have found that that works. The other thing that you want is you want some National Geographics. Um, some websites profess that, you know, if you use older ones, it's more successful than newer ones. I've actually used everything from 80, 85, 87, 89, 2000s, 90s, everything. Um, and I've found that there really isn't a lot of difference. The paper for older ones are actually a lot thinner and sometimes they're not as successful. So you'll notice that these are actually from 2012 and 2011 um, and I just like the fact that some of these papers from the newer ones are a little bit more substantial and I have a friend who has the hookup for these so this tends to be something that's really good. I also like to use a regular brush. You'll probably destroy your brush so you don't want to use something precious. Um, I've got a couple of q-tips, some scissors, paper towels, and I've lined my surface with a trash bag. So what you'll do first and what a lot of um, sites will tell you is to go ahead and tear off things like the cover and the first few pages. Um, they do tend to use a different kind of paper. So what you'll do is you'll actually go through until you find um, the title page or you start seeing the first types of images and you're just going to tear off everything before that. Um, the main thing is is that you will waste a lot of your citrus solve and a bottle like this which is eight fluid ounces um, when on sale is six dollars when not on sale it's like eight dollars so and this will do about three National Geographic's is what I found um, in my experience. So I'm going to tear off the back stuff that I know is not going to be good um, for this. I'm actually going to try these back images because um, they seem to be pretty glossy and they might work, but I will tear off the back here. The other thing that you're going to do is you're going to go through and you're going to get out anything like this. Um, those types of papers won't work. If you see like an ad paper, a lot of times you can just scrap that, especially if it's towards the front. But really what this does is it makes it easier to flip through it. And um, a lot of places online will tell you that that's good. So you'll notice that this one has a really good array of images that are image, image on both sides. And that's really what you want. Um, some places will tell you to take these foldouts out. I kind of like them, so I'm excited about that one specifically. Um, so, now that I'm pretty confident that there's nothing in here that's going to be bad, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my citrus solve and I'm going to take the end of my um, little Q-tip here. Oops, well, that didn't quite work. Um, has in the past, but let's see. That one's a little wishy-washy. I'm going to poke a hole. Um, you can also tear off just a little piece, but basically I just don't want too much to come out all at once. And even then I'm still going to keep my finger on it. I'm wearing gloves to protect my hands. I have very sensitive skin, and even though this has that it is all natural and with real essential oils, it actually does have some chemicals in it. Um, my husband pointed out um, that one of the things that's in it, which is the C10-16 Parath 1, is actually, even though it's derived from plants, um, it is something that is a, an acidic type um, material and it will be kind of caustic to your skin. So that's probably what he's identified as actually contributing to this effect and probably what is actually making my skin inflame really badly. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit on a few pages here 
and you can do this in any sort of way that you want. Um, I'm not being too skimpy on it when it comes to these images like this that have a lot of inks. I don't want to put too much right away because it'll start to bleed out. They will soak through multiple pages, so you actually don't have to worry too much um, about this. Uh, not kind of going farther. But I have noticed um, when I did this the first few times that when I brushed it on, um, it was too thin. When I sprayed it on, because I was trying to be very conscientious and conserve a lot of the citrusol liquid, um, that what happened is I didn't actually have enough on the surface to create an effect. So when I went back in to check on it after it was cooking, um, which is what a lot of places will call it, so after it had cooked for a few minutes, nothing was happening. The ink wasn't going anywhere, and um, I really wasn't happy with it, so I actually ended up using more. And I feel like, um, really, you get so many great images from it that you might as well just go on and be a little bit more liberal with it. The cat that you hear meowing is the neighbor cat. I'm actually on my porch right now. My cats are inside watching me from inside of the window. Um, and he's, the neighbor cat is sort of like, what are you doing outside? Um, but this is a really smelly uh, material. And that C16 Paris thing um, that is, you know, the chemical that's probably doing this, um, it's not probably that good to breathe in a lot of... Uh, extended period of time and so I would recommend you do this outside. It doesn't smell unpleasant. It doesn't smell like most chemicals which is actually really good. So so one thing that you see in a lot of videos online for this technique oop, missed one, um, is that they sort of just flip and they show scattering this on a couple of things and then they don't really show anything else so what I wanted to do, um, especially for my students, uh, who I will encourage to watch this video and perhaps even investigate this for some of their projects. I know my painting class has a really cool um, collage type project coming up that they might enjoy. I wanted them to see it from the beginning to the end um, to sort of see what I see, uh, respond to things in the way that I would you know, maybe want them to think about or consider. So hopefully this will be helpful and it won't just be another one of the millions of videos showing the citrus solve techniques online. The first time I did this I did actually three magazines all at once and honestly it was a lot of work. It was more work than I thought it would be and I felt like I just got overwhelmed. Um, I really didn't know what I was doing and I figured out a lot of things that I should have done which was great but when you start really just start with one. Make your life a little easier. So this is going to balloon out like this. If you press this down what's going to happen is that all of your pages are going to crease and that can actually create some really interesting things um, but it may not be something that you desire and for me not something I desire too much so I'm going to push this down a little bit you'll actually start seeing some of the dye coming out on to the plastic um, some of it's rubbing off you'll notice that on the back where this is soaked through the paper you can actually see it um, rubbing off and this is really indicative of when it works. So if you're in doubt that you've got the right type of citrusol, this is how you figure it out. If it doesn't blend, um, if you don't start seeing ink coming out uh, from the very beginning, it's not working. So even from the very start, you can actually unfold things and start see, seeing how they're working. Um, and sometimes you'll actually see things that you like immediately and you'll be like oh that's really nice um, you can tear that out when it happens the first time I did this I was really scared I thought that I had to leave everything and make it you know quote unquote cook um, for a really long time in order to get effects that I liked and what I realized by the time I did like my third magazine is that sometimes you'll actually start to get some effects early on that you like um, so right now 
it's hard to see because of the glare, but you'll actually see a lot of the imagery is still there. And depending on what imagery you have in your National Geographic, you might actually want some of that imagery to stay um, apparent. Now there are copyright issues. You do um, want to have things cooked to the degree that you distort the image and destroy it enough that you can't really tell that it's the artist's original photograph. So that is something that you do want to be mindful of. Um, but honestly, this destroys it so much that I don't think that it's, you know, an exceptional um, worry for most people. So one thing I saw one blogger do was actually wet the sides. And um, I thought that was a really good idea. And I've liked the way that it sort of worked with things because when you're sprinkling stuff in, a lot of times you're sprinkling it right into the middle and it sometimes misses the edges. I'm going to do that. Squish it up a little bit. One thing you can also do is you can take um, saran wrap or any sort of plasticky paper. You'll even notice that like you can do stuff here um, by like pushing your plastic down into the surface and it will affect it much in the way that watercolor um, gets affected. But for this magazine I'm not going to really do that. I'm not going to play around with extra things. So I'm going to open up a couple more pages, see if anything has happened. Sorry for the glare, I'm doing this sort of later in the evening. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look through here and I'm going to see if there are areas that maybe need a little bit of help. So stuff that maybe isn't quite as, um, you know, advanced as I want it to be, maybe there's still too much imagery showing inside of it, I'm going to do that. Now another fun thing that you can do is you can take your brush and when you see something that has some text in it, so up here this area has some text and let's say that I really don't want that in the final image, you can actually take um, some Citrusol and you can literally scrub that text out which I think is really a good way to do it. So you can create all kinds of interesting effects. So here, like if I smooth this out, it's got a nice good shimmery coat on it. And then I close this on that surface. Um, when I open it back up, it will start to create some interesting effects once it starts to dry a little bit on that surface. So we'll come back to that one see what's happening. I noticed one thing from the first one. I was really concerned. I wanted every page to like have like crazy amazing effects and that's not always going to be possible for some of these things. Um, so don't feel like every page has to be something that's really fun. But you'll end up getting enough out of it of every single geographic that you'll feel like it's completely worth the time and the effort and the money if it's something that you really like. So here would be a good example of something that looks pretty distorted. Um, there might be a little bit of that effect of like the city or the, the skyline in the background, but it's pretty, pretty distressed. Its counterpart is also pretty distressed. So I like this and I would want to keep it, so it's going to get pulled off. Now one thing I notice is that down here there's an area that's sort of, you know, not desirable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape at that a little bit, just a little bit, sort of distress it, create that nice little edge, and then I'm going to come over with the other sheet, press it down on top of it. I don't want the brush strokes to be there, um, so this will sort of even it out a little bit so it doesn't hurt anything. And then you can just lay these aside to dry and come back to them later.